And he was sitting uh, and releasing on a goal of having wealth. And I think it was on financial independence. His friend uh, called him up and said, you're now a millionaire. And he said, that money you gave me to help me start my company, when he was sitting there releasing is when it went public. And you're now, th your investment in it is now worth millions of dollars. As parents, who are parents to be, what should the people do to stop handing down these unhealthy emotions and attitude? So, release. <laughs> First off, yeah, some of it's going to be handed down no matter what. That's just the way it is. You can't control it all. But if you release and do the best you can, you'll find that you will raise your children with more love and affection and caring. You'll still make mistakes. Everyone does. And expecting yourself to be perfect is unreasonable and just causes su suffering and stress. So just do the best you can. And not to try not to make the same mistakes, but as you let go, you'll find yourself responding to your children more naturally, more spontaneously. And they'll get that. Your letting go supports them. And even if you're doing some of the same things your parents or your grandparents did, it won't have the same heaviness because you're letting go. You're getting lighter. You're more open. You're freer. What happens is our emotions can run interference for a queer reason and intuition. So as you let go of whatever emotion appears to be holding you back, it makes you more effective at everything, at communicating, at investing, at being a good parent, uh, being a good husband or a good wife, being a good lover. If you let go, your children are calmer, they're happier. They're more at ease. Because again, children do this naturally, but around adults, they feel like they have to, you know, do they have to contract and be as mm. your way. Whereas if you're letting go, you'll find your children naturally let go too. Can you share some story of people who successfully practiced releasing emotion or money? Yes, of course, of course. And this was a few years ago. He had made an investment that he totally forgot about. It was just in a friend's company. And he was sitting uh, and releasing on a goal of having wealth. And I think it was on financial independence. And as he, he got to this place where he's very released inside, and within a day or two, his friend called him up. And this is 20 years earlier, so he had totally forgotten he'd even done it. And it wasn't even a large amount of money. Well, his friend uh, called him up and said, you're now a millionaire. And he said, the, that money you gave me to help me start my company, we just went public. And you're now the, your investment in it is now worth millions of dollars. And he found out later that when he was sitting there releasing is when it went public and all that money became available to him. And we see this happen all the time. People who struggle even to find a job or to stay in a job, they release and they find the perfect job or they're able to stay at the job. And they're also able to enjoy their work more. There's an expression in the United States uh, referring to Wall Street is that the bears make money when the market goes down and the bulls make money when the market goes up. So the, the bulls and the bears make money, but the pigs get slaughtered. <laughs> and what that means is if you are lost in lust, you might want to wring the most out of that investment and you won't sell it in time, even though the investments go up and down all the time. But you might end up selling when it's low and buying when it's high instead of buying when it's low and selling when it's high. But as you let go, you let go of your fear and your lust and your and your needing to have more. And you'll find that your investment decisions are naturally much clearer and much more effective. It's very helpful when it comes to finances. Is it because the people let go of the fantasy that they will make money or not after things happen? Well, what happens is we can all get into magical thinking where we fantasize about how great it's going to be when I have the better job or more money in the bank. And we are so satisfied with the fantasy that we never actually take action to make it a reality. And so what happens is when you let go, you let go 
of the fantasies and you deal with what actually is. And it just, you, and you're able to tell the difference. Sometimes we can't tell the difference between our fantasy and what's actually happening. And when you can tell the difference, and this helps in relationships, you deal with life the way it is. I think that it is not easy to practice letting go if you are surrounded by people who have negative views or money. If we can not get away from those people, what can you do? Uh, that's a very good question. See, the, the thing is that in life, we don't have control over circumstances. Like when we were doing the process before, there was some noise in the background. And so what? That's just what's happening. Even in your house, if you're in a family, things are always happening. That's the nature of life. It doesn't stop just because you're wanting to do something in particular. And so just know that however life is unfolding is a gift. And how it's unfolding, it doesn't have to be at all an interference with letting go. Because this is natural, you'll find that even if you're around very negative people, which is unavoidable, you can still let go. And you, you may be surprised that as you let go, the people around you will become, get more positive. One of the things that happens as you do this is you'll find that your relationships change spontaneously and the other people don't need to be releasing. You'll find that you releasing starts to heal the relationship. And what also may happen though, is as you let go, you can't change your family. Your family is your family. You don't trade them in. <laughs> but your friends may change. You may find that you gravitate with more positive people and spend less time with people who seem more negative. And that will uh, happen spontaneously and naturally. And you'll find you become more tolerant of your family, more accepting of them. And you'll find ways even if you don't teach them anything about the Sedona method, you'll find ways to support them better because you're getting your own her inner turmoil out of the way. So this is very healing for relationships, including family relationships. When you're in a family, there are so many expectations for you that have to be a particular way. There's the right way to do it. There's society's right way. There's your mother's right way, your father's right way, your uh, community's right way. There's the part of the country you live in has the right way to do things in the wrong way. And that's natural. When in human society, that's how we relate to each other. Yet even then you can let go and find yourself flowing naturally and responding more appropriately to whatever is happening around you. And you'll also find that they'll st start responding often differently to you. Because you can get lost in a large extended family and you can feel like, oh, I need to do it their way because, oh, it's easier, or I need to agree with them because otherwise it's gonna, I'm gonna have to have a big fight or, or, oh, I can't do this in my life because they won't approve. But what happens is as you let go, do you naturally stand up for yourself when appropriate? With the, the, this process, you'll find that at first, you may not remember to release until you've done it again. Oh my God, I'm running the same unconscious pattern again, even though I've released on her or even though I know better, but that's okay. If you release then, and then over time, as you keep letting go, the pattern just drops away. It drops away even out of your subconscious. And you might not even remember that you had this problem until someone reminds you about it. They say, well, how are you doing now with your uncle? And you go, oh, my relationship with my uncle now is okay. We made up. It's so much better that I forgot I had a problem with my uncle. You don't have to dig it out of your subconscious. Just life itself brings up the, the past. And you just simply let go in this moment. And as you keep doing it, everything tends to right itself. Every time you let go of any emotion, you're letting go of all the subconscious ties as well. When people lack the emotional support or growing up in an abusive family who had many others' negative memories, what kind of emotions do they show predominantly? It could be anything. 
And most of us, even if we have a very loving family and everything seemed to go well, as long as we're carrying around the our interpretation of the past, it can be a heavy burden, which can, can manifest as anger or fear or frustration. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that no matter where the emotions appear to be coming from, whether it be trauma or bad things that happen in the past, in this moment, there's just the emotion you're having in the moment. And it doesn't matter how justified it is, how long you've had it, how much other people are trying to convince you it's the way you should feel. You can still let go. And when you do, you feel better. Uh, do they show you some kind of common traits? Can you share some of your observations, please? Well, some of the common traits, if you've had an abusive past, is you have a tendency to blame yourself when things don't go the way they're supposed to. Because if you've grown up in a, a physically or emotionally an abusive environment, it's not safe to think that the people that your parents or your relatives would actually do something abusive to you. So you tend as a young child to blame yourself and you feel guilty. And you start to blame yourself for what they did. And that can translate in your life. And what you can discover is that you don't need to punish yourself anymore for anyone else's mistakes. You can just live your life. And that can really help dissolve the patterns. Do you have any advice to people who want to do through this kind of childhood? What about younger generations whose memory are still fresh? I advise the same thing to everyone. Love yourself as you are and do your best to love others too, but start by loving yourself. If you love yourself, it's easier to love others. And as you love yourself and you love others and you keep letting go, you'll find that even the people who appeared to be negative or abusing, they were doing what they thought was right at the time, even if it wasn't. And you'll find that you naturally can forgive others for their mistakes as well as forgive yourself for your mistakes. You may even let go enough to see that there are no mistakes. There is just what apparently happens. And there is no right and no wrong and no good and no bad in it. It is just what's unfolding. And all of it is part of this one beingness that all is. I see many successful people who still suffer from the childhood memory that yes, parents yes. were not there for them emotionally. How do they practice letting go? How do they heal from childhood trauma and fear self-sufficient split? So the thing to remember is that it's not happening now. When we have childhood trauma or we just simply didn't get what we felt like we needed when we were young, we can feel like it's happening now and we're not getting it now, even if we are. People could be very loving towards us, but we can't even accept it or feel it because we have these inner barriers based on what we're holding on to from the past. But if you allow yourself to recognize that it isn't happening now, it's just a memory, and the feelings you have about it are the feelings you have now, then you can release those feelings. You can let them go. And then what happens is the memories from the past, you can still remember what happened, but it's not a burden anymore. It's no longer something you're compensating for in your life. Letting go can dissolve even the deepest, darkest, most painful memories from the past. There are so many people that have lived life in the dark because they think that these memories have to define them now. And it doesn't have to be that way. If you let go, it can dissolve. It dissolves into the light of being. And it can, no matter how big it seems, even then it can be released. Uh, we just mentioned feeling unloved. I wanted to discuss a few more feelings, emotions that people struggle with, like self-hate, self-pity, yes. and the low self-esteem. It is yes, a yes. lot. Do you have uh, any tricks for letting go of all these? Love. The more you you love, 
the more that dissolves. When we feel self-pity, we're bathing in our self-loathing. We're bathing in our hate for ourselves and others. And that's not wrong. It's a reflex. It happens automatically. But if you can just love yourself, love others, love what's happening as best you can, all that can dissolve. What are some self-checking questions to release unnecessary misconception and fear about being financial free? Uh, there are so many. By the way, if you want, I can actually do a few releases as we do this interview so that people can experience it and me taking people through the process will help people get more of a feeling sense of it. So why don't I explain a basic process and then I'll take us all through it. How does that sound? Oh, that will be great. So I'm going to ask a series of questions. And as I ask these questions, if you don't understand the English, just read them on the screen, but listen to the feeling behind the words that I'm saying. It will help you get in touch. So you might need to go back and listen to this and watch this a few more times. Uh, but you'll find that you start to feel the release naturally and spontaneously. Let your heart lead as opposed to your head as best you can if your heart your head gets in that's totally fine so the questions i'm going to use is first is we'll focus on something that you want to release and it doesn't matter what it is the next thing we'll do is we'll just simply welcome or allow our emotions and we've already discussed what that means is just let them be there and then the next question is could you let it go and could you just means are you capable of it and if you could drop any object then I know you are. The next question is, would you let it go? And would you just means, are you willing to? And if you're ever doing this on your own and you feel like you're struggling, just ask yourself, would I rather hold on to this thought or this feeling or this suffering, or would I rather be free and have my goals? And the last question is when, and when is an invitation to decide to do it now? You may find that you let go a little on could you, a little on uh, would you, and a little on when, or you may save it all up for when. Either way, it doesn't matter. And it may be subtle at first, especially if you're reading subtitles and trying to respond at the same time. But as you do this a few times, you'll find it gets easier and easier to do. So I'll take us all through this process. Oh, yeah, yeah, we will do that. Thank okay. you, thank you. When you release, have the inner attitude that you have all the time in the world. And if at first it doesn't release, just try again. Each time you do it, it gets easier. And you may not know you're releasing at first because it can start out as very subtle. But as you keep doing it, it gets more and more obvious. Even just asking yourself these questions even if you're not sure the answer, even if the answer is no, mm -hmm. I can't let it go. There's still a release. You're still letting the air in because you're opening the door at least to the possibility of letting go. And that in itself can be revolutionary. Most people don't realize that they can let go. I'll take everyone through the process mm -hmm. of letting go. In, in this moment, could you just simply pause or stop? and notice what is. And could you be open at least to the possibility that whatever problem you appear to have, whatever you're struggling with, whatever seems unright, is just what's apparently happening. It's not right or wrong or good or bad. It just is what's appearing. And then could you allow yourself to think of something in your life that you'd like to fix, change or control or just simply improve? And whatever comes to mind, could you just welcome it or allow it, along with whatever feeling or thought it brings up inside of you? Could you just let it be here? 
And then whatever is being felt, could you let it go? Just could you as best you can? Would you? When? Now you may have let go a little on each question or you may not be sure, but let's run through it a few more times. Each time we do it, it becomes easier. <laughs> let's do that one more time. <laughs> so focus on that same thing or anything else that you're wanting to change or improve. And then just simply notice how you feel inside. And could you just welcome or allow it, be present with it? And then as best you can, just for now, could you let it go, just could you? Would you? When? Okay, good. So you'll find that as you practice this process on your own, mm -hmm. it will get easier and easier to, good, uh, to do. But that's a piece you can start practicing on your own and you'll start to see benefit from it. Another question. Like I mentioned, that I had obsessive thoughts that I have achieved my goals. When I focus on just my wants, my goals were tied with others' achievements. It became too much pressure when I let go of that. I saw that thing were filling that space. Yes, when, when you let go of, it's so opposite of what we believe. How we all are is we're in this river of life. We're not really separate from the river. We just feel separate. And when we feel separate, we feel like we actually have to push the river to make it flow. But if you think about a river, if you're standing in a river pushing it, it or if floating in the river and you're pushing the river, is it going to flow any faster? No, it just flows. Life flows as it does. So when we push against life, we just feel resistance. We just feel struggle. We feel contraction. And it's unnecessary. As you let go, the need to push life yeah. or to resist it. The, the other thing is life is carrying us in a particular direction. And most of us are facing away from the direction the life is carrying us. And we're furiously kicking and screaming and trying to you know, fl uh, swim upstream. But it's inevitable that life flows the way it does. The river eventually reaches the ocean. And as you let go, you can just simply sit back and let the river carry you. I'm sure people would love to connect with your content more and how to do We Found You and your future event, please. So if anyone wants to connect with me, the simplest thing to do is go to Sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A.com. And we have all the information about all our programs, but also all our free content. And uh, besides that, the other thing that's helpful is uh, there is a Sedona Method channel on YouTube that has hundreds of videos. And you can watch that channel and turn on translation. Yeah, thank you so much for your heartwarming conversation. We love that you share your wisdom and knowledge today. I really appreciate it so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks to your whole team for making this possible.